What's good, YouTube? What's good? It's Stormy B Man, and I am back welcoming you to the post fight show with Stormy B Man as we cover the fights that took place this evening, showtime for this Saturday, July 3rd, 2021. And I also want to welcome my man, Boxing Conversations with Reggie Owens, into the uh, show and we're going to talk about these fights that just took place. They just wrapped up. And uh, how you doing, Reggie? How's it going? <clears throat> oh, it's going good. It's going good. How's it going with you, OG? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another day of boxing, man. We had 
a couple of fights and we also had a replay from last weekend and I, I wasn't aware that we were going to have that like I heard a lot of people saying they weren't aware that uh, Showtime was going to re-air uh, the fight that took place last week between Mario Barrios and uh, Javante Davis but uh, for those who didn't buy the pay-per-view it was an opportunity for them nonetheless to get a chance to see that fight which was a scintillating uh stoppage by uh tank davis man he did his thing and we really have an appreciation for what the young guy has started being a little man carrying a big stick and uh it kicked off the evening pretty well because we saw some some good action this evening even though the uh main event turned out to be <clears throat> a one-sided affair but there were some interesting things that took place early on. Uh, wouldn't you agree with that, uh, Reggie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so as we get on into it, man, uh, let's talk about the, uh, <laughs> the fight that took place uh, first on the uh, card for the uh, Showtime Live, uh, where we had a chance to see uh, what's his name? Michelle Muhammad Ali Rivera taking on uh, John Fernandez uh, in a in a fight where <laughs> everyone Reggie was saying that this kid looked like a young Cassius Clay out there. He had on the black the, the white trunks with the black trim and the white shoes, and he he was rangy and was kind of moving around like Ali out there. And uh, he kind of gave us flashbacks, even though that they were only lightweights. But uh, he, he he boxed his butt off, Reggie. And he, he opened the show tonight with some pretty doggone good action, man. Would you like to uh, take a recount of uh, your assessment of that when 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 it uh, when the bout took place? Because I know you you made the call and uh, it turned out to be. An interesting uh, scrape. <clears throat> yeah, no, that those both of those guys can fight, and I was seeing that early on that they 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 have some good tools in the bag. Is both of them mixed up well? And then I kind of it was it was crazy that before I saw the trunks, like this kid looked just like the young Ali, and then everybody in the chat was saying the same thing and then I see he has Ali on the front of the short so he recognized it uh and it must be that and it, and also with that this kid is really studying Muhammad Ali he was good with the head movement he always constantly moving his head he's not just sitting there his movement was his movements were good when he throws a punch his ability to react and move out the way for counters was good but he fought another guy who had great great abilities as well he would get caught every now and then but it was just the variations of how well they mix punches, the jabs to the bodies were, were, were good. Uh, the hooks, combination punching was good. Then they'll have kind of the back and forth. And then it was in one round to where he started to take off. And it was Fernandez coming right back at him. And even for his coach to ask, was everything all right? And then to see him come right back in the next round and start to go to work. And I think that was in the round where he's doing good work, where he gets caught with a – with a uh, punch that just that just got right there and dropped him as he's throwing a punch him being able to get up from 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 that um knockdown he was a little bit buzzed because he started to hurt i could not see the punch but it was a it was a, a solid punch that got in there and and his ability to think while going through that and he fought well in that moment where he got dropped where he boxed a little bit to kind of play it off and act as if he wasn't hurt, but he also held to buy himself some time. So I thought that was kind of a veteran of the kid. Shows that the kid has abilities and his mind is functioning there. And then to come out in that, in that next round and put in his work. And then the way he capitalized that fight off with that with that big right hand behind the jab. The way he set everything up perfectly. And that's one of the things that Colbert should have been doing to try to get his right hand in there. It's the blinded behind a jab. And uh, but everything, everything was just fluid with this guy. And even the other guy who lost the fight. But the knockout was so devastating. Watching that dude Fernandez try to get up and his body could not figure it out. It was nothing there. And then to watch him even roll over and fall all the way back. 
was crazy about the power that this kid delivered. Great, 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 great fighter. I don't know where the heck they found this guy at, but this guy made him a mark, uh, stole the show, was really the the center event for that fight there, and what a way to end it. Great, great abilities from that guy. Yeah, I was <clears throat> I was impressed with his boxing and uh even more impressed with him in the post fight interview because he was trying Reggie to speak and you know you could tell definitely I think he's Dominican his, his English was not his first language but he was trying to express himself and he was very excited <clears throat> And he had very good positive energy on himself. And what a, I, it, it was very pleasant. Everything about him was very pleasant. If I were to have a critique of anything that transpired in there with him this evening, it would have been simply his, um, as he boxed through the fight, I didn't like he putting his head beneath the opponent's shoulders where he always ended up like under the Fernandez's armpit or something. Remember, I've talked about this in the past. That's a terrible habit to get into where you're lowering your head beneath the opponent's shoulders where he can get you under his elbows, under his armpit or whatever because bad things can happen to you off of that type of action. They need to take him back to the gym and work on not doing that because he didn't necessarily have to be even in that position with the range he had with his arm reach um, and the mobility that he had in his legs. Uh, he was throwing a crisp right hand off of a jab all night long and his boxing when he elected to put his punches together were tremendously effective. I, I liked what I saw in the fact that he could punch off of moving. And when he sat down on his shots, they looked nice and crisp. And he found out early on he could land that right hand. And I remember after one of the rounds, it might have been the third, <clears throat> if not the fourth. His cornerman asked him, did you hurt your hand or something? And he was like, no, my hand's good or whatever. And he was like, well, throw him. <laughs> he was like, let your hands go. Because it was one of those rounds that he kind of really let Fernandez get back into the match. And it was like, after those words from his cornerman, he really picked it up. And the only thing negative that happened off of that was that knockdown, which he got caught with a shot as he was on the move. And it was like a delayed reaction. His leg came out from under him. He went down. It was a legitimate knockdown. But how about this? He got up, got right back into the fight, and ended up winning the fight by knockout himself. These are the type of things that you like to see in a young fighter. And I still consider him a prospect, you know. But when you see that type of effort, where the knockdown made no difference to him. He was able to get up, get right back into the fight, and the way he stopped the opponent, John Fernandez, that one-two combination, Reggie, it was something just out of the book of Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali was at his best, when he was still known as Cassius Clay, and just after beating Sonny Liston had changed his name to Muhammad Ali, that's the way he fought. Stick, stick, bam, drop that right hand on people. And he was knocking people out the same kind of way. And man, did that knock out. He, off the jab that Fernandez didn't even see the right hand. It was like you blinded him with that jab and came right behind it with that right hand, right on the temple. And the guy was out. And he was so out, Reggie. When he went down, he crumpled. And... As he rolled over, he thought about trying to rise, but he just fell back on his back. It was very dramatic. What a scintillating knockout by Michelle Rivera, man. This kid, I want to see him again. He was very enthusiastic. He was very happy about uh, his victory. 
He wanted to talk to everybody. He wanted to give a longer interview. It was like, and it wasn't arrogance. It was just like that boyish type enthusiasm that you're not seeing a lot of these days. And it was a breath of fresh air. Watching this young man do what he did. He fought an exciting fight. People got to see him because he was on Showtime. And you kind of like look forward to, hey, when is this kid going to fight again? You know what I mean? Uh, I was very impressed with his his uh, performance and yet and still how he was able to overcome the adversity he had faced in there because being dropped and, you, you, you know, you're on national TV on Showtime, it could have got to him or something. Psh, man, it was nothing. When he got up from that knockdown, it was like it had never happened. And he got right back into boxing, sticking, sticking, moving. And another little uh, bit of criticism about him is... Please learn distance. And when you throw your shots, when you find out you can land, because he found out early on he could land that right hand, right? Put those damn punches together in bunches, bro. Put them together in combinations because you have an exciting style. You have great hand speed. You have decent power and pop on your punches. Looks like he's well conditioned. And when you put the punches together, the knockouts will come. But I, I, I really liked his performance this evening. Did you have anything else that you'd like to add or, or say about the opening uh, fight, Reggie? No, no. I, I want to just see more of, the, more of the kid. I definitely want to see more of him. And uh, hopefully he gets better with his English because I know he's really working on that and he loves the to interview you ain't gonna be able to get him off the mic he went another fight and <laughs> he's gonna be uh trying hard to get his english wording out but uh no this this kid this kid got skills and like i say i want to see more of these more of these these dudes that are around this around the world i think said he's i think he, he was he's from dominican republic and like like this ain't just an american sport to me i want to see everyone that is out here Hopefully they can get on more fights. They put on because I mean, the the PBC them pulled out some guys out the hat who put on been put on some pretty entertaining fights and can probably really mix it in, mix it in with the uh, top group that we see showcased here. We're Americans, so we kind of uh, kind of gravitate towards fighters we know that are from this country. But this country's across this globe. I want to see all of them. I. Ain't, like I said, I'm a fan of boxing. I'm exclusive to somebody just because they're from my country or whatnot. If you can fight, you can fight, and I want to see it. Uh, so hopefully there's more guys like this that can showcase this talent and put a finish like this on it. But I just want to see when the next time he's going to fight. Now I know who he is. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> and again, I you know, that, that enthusiasm that he had. And let's talk about this, too, uh, very briefly, Reggie. His style is traditional. It's it's like of that Ali mold. And you could tell he's trying to pattern himself. But that tradition, stick that jab, work off the jab with that straight right hand down the middle. He can beat a lot of people with more experience under his belt because guess what, Reggie? There's not a lot of traditional boxers around anymore. You got all these guys who try to do that shoulder roll crap. These guys who keep their hands low. You saw a guy in the main event that could get hit as long as the other man was throwing down punches. But it's like there are things that he can get accomplished. Get a little more experience under his belt. Move on up there and start challenging some people because he can box. We talk about this so much, having technique, having the technical capability, how to place your shots. And uh, we saw that from him. Like I said, he needs some tweaking on some things, but I was very pleased with his performance, pleased with his attitude, pleased with the fact that even after suffering a knockdown, he got up, went about his work, stop the other guy we often talk about that 
in championship caliber fighters, guys who can take it and then dish it out. He learned something tonight in this fight. He had never been knocked out, knocked off his feet or anything. He learned that just because you get knocked down don't mean the fight is over, that you could get up and win. That's something that even some champions out there have yet to experience, and it'll be very interesting to see them go through that process and how they're going to respond to it. Remember, some, some people... When you knock them on their behind, the fight leaves them. It, you, you know, for shame, for embarrassment, for not knowing what to do next, how to, how to take it. Remember, when we saw Tiafimo Lopez in there with uh, Mayoshi uh, Nakatani, just because the fight was difficult, he was reassessing how he was going to choose opponents going forward and everything, right? He talked about that in the post fight. A guy who was calling himself the takeover, right? He was trying to make excuses already for what he's going to do next. And again, that's that's mentally how it affected him. You knock, Being knocked down is part of boxing. It can happen to anyone that's participating out there. It's what you do after being knocked down. Or after being clocked with a, a, a tremendous shot, you got to know, you know, what your plan is next and what you intend to do to the other guy. So I just wanted to say, you know, salute to Michelle Rivera, man. It, it, great, great fight tonight. Uh, good performance. You look forward to seeing him again. And uh, hey, I, I'll be watching, you know, and he has time. You know, because there's some guys up there way ahead of the pack at the top of the division that need to sort some things out amongst one another, which gives him opportunity to grow and, and, and learn his craft and, and, and to move up at a pace that he doesn't have to be rushed. So uh, th those are my thoughts about him. <clears throat> So uh, as, we, as we move on forward, we can get on into the main event, which was the uh, fight between uh, Chris Colbert and Tug, Tugstad uh, Nyambayar. Um, this fight here, Reggie, a good call on that. I, I was listening and, and heard what you had to say. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in Nyambayar from the middle rounds on. I don't know if, you know, conditioning played a role because, you know, he only took this fight on a couple of weeks notice and the original opponent was Yuriokis Gamboa. So we don't know if if he was true. He was in real true boxing shape and he, he could have been, you know, because this was a moving up in weight for him as well so he could have been close to the weight already and took the fight based on that and maybe he was just trying to conserve because he didn't want to gas out but early on he was tagging Colbert with some with some solid shots I thought like had he shifted and started putting in more body work he could have had more success in the middle to late rounds but it looked like early on he was content with trying to tag the guy on the chin. And when guys are in good condition, you could tag them on the chin and everything. But all they're going to do, especially if you got pop on your punches, which is what Colbert ended up speaking about in the, in the post fight. And we could talk about that in a moment. But all they got to do is start making some adjustments, making adjustments to have the change of distance between where you can land that most solid shot which is what Colbert did and the sh take something off of that punch for you. So that's why I wrote in your chat. I was like, he needs to go to the body. He needs to concentrate on the body. You, you take the body and, and get that body work in. He don't have the legs to do that dancing around that he did in the last two, three rounds. So uh, what, what was your assessment and uh, how you did the call? On, on this particular fight, Reggie? 
Man, uh, well, I, I gotta give Chris Colbert his, his credit. He came in there, he came close to pitching a shutout. But there's things that have to be worked on. Um, not sure if a lot of pressure from what was stated in this interview, which put a lot of pressure on his back. But he was trying too hard. He was trying way too hard to press for a knockout, to press to try to hurt this guy, who press trying to look impressive. Uh, the jab was working brilliantly for him. The jab he could not miss with. But throwing that right hand, he was trying to commit too much to that right hand. And even when he landed the right hand solidly, it had no effect on Nyan Bayar. Now, by Nyan Bayar, I wish would have tried to press the offensive a little bit more, but it's the same thing Nyan Bayar did when he fought Gary Russell is his offense began to freeze up. It was uh, too much what he was looking for. He hungered for, it seemed to be a singular shot because he did catch Colbert two or three times with, with a solid, uh, with one of those solid right-hand shots. It was one right hand that landed towards the middle part of the fight where Colbert got reckless once again, ran into a big right-hand shot that stunned him. But non not being offensively uh, uh, forward, forward moving leading fighter, he didn't go after it. He allowed Colbert to recover, who was in great cardio condition, to recover from that shot. But even in the post fight, well, not even post fight, in between rounds, Colbert was like, "This I ain't never been hit this hard. It's the strongest punch I've been in there with." That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. Being up at the division, is Colbert a little bit? Is is Colbert in the wrong division? Uh, seeing that his power didn't have no translation to it to a guy that came in the last minute as a replacement. Could it be an issue that this guy is fighting at? Maybe he should be down at 126. Um, he needs to focus on some things. I think he played a little bit too much in this fight. I think at moments he wasn't taking things serious, and he has to he has to to kind of eliminate that. He has to mature and humble up in these fights and and, and take these things serious because it's going to get dangerous for him if he was having these type of not so much of the boxing, but then again he can also tap into. His ability to box us, he started to show great movement towards the later ends of this fight, but he can't move all day. You're going to have to sit in there and fight. Uh, just can't be slippery and moving around throughout a whole fight. Um, he's going to have some issues because some tough guys in there. Him and Shakur, he ain't going to be able to do a lot of stuff on Shakur. He's going to have to box. His power may not be able to register, so he's going to have to find other ways to win fights, and he has to focus in more. Uh, he's playing around too much with the coach just of the game in here and it could have got dangerous had number are been a little bit busier in this fight but um it was a, a solid victory he's able to pull away with it he had moments where he would bully nyan briar wish he would have stuck to his high guard uh uh fighting that he was doing i thought it was effective then he got away from it he'll go back playing into the south southpaw stance um more fighting in the uh style of uh boo playing around with that. At one moment when he did it the first time, Nayan Bar found it was a moment to to take advantage of and start to unload on him. But uh, all in all, it was a pretty much a one-sided fight. But uh, there's some things that he has to work on and some things he needs to keep as a focus when he's in a fight, and that's not the play. But this competition gets better. He ain't going to be able to play around like that. But that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, and also uh, something I wanted to add, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, Colbert's uh, performance is that, yeah, he pretty much won every round. I, I, I gave Nyan Biar only one round out of the 12, but I noticed that he was not bringing his hands back home after punching. And Nyan Biar was so economical with his punches that he wasn't able to capitalize on that and just on a genetic athletic basis he was not going to be able to keep up with Colbert and hand speed and things of that nature or even foot speed but if he is talking about fighting the likes of Shakur Stevenson or even a Devin Haney or something like that he's going to pay tremendously for those mistakes uh I noticed his his uh, huge supporter and Zab Judah was out there in the uh, audience, you know, edging him on and everything, which is always great to have, you know, veteran fighters and former world champions a part of your 
uh, support group and everything. But let's not forget that that was one of the Achilles of Zab Judah, of keeping his hands low and everything and in there against quality fighters that had exceptional ability or even exceptional timing, a la Costa Zoo, we remember what happened to Zab with those low hands and pulling away with shots and stuff like that. Zab, Zab was timed and he was put on his rear end, actually stopped by Costa Zoo. And uh, in some other fights, he faced guys that took advantage of he with the low hands, uh, Danny Garcia. You know, that there, there are things, you know, and I'm not trying to be overly critical, but I'm pointing out technical aspects of things that need to be worked on because you can get away with it against a fighter who doesn't have the athleticism to compete with you. But he's in uh, uh, an, an era of uh, people in his weight class that have that and that they can contest that with him. And he has to be very careful and mindful because they can take advantage and make him pay. Uh, you, you'll see that if he fights those top guys that I'm talking about. But on this night against someone like uh, Nyambayar, he was able to get away with those things. Uh, I want to take a quick moment and go to the, we got a super chat uh, donation out there from the brother uh, Taylor Bell. He says, uh, <laughs> thanks uh, Taylor Bell for the support there. He says, chat, we need to support the Stormy B-Man channel more. Reggie and Stormy are giving better boxing breakdowns than anyone else. Show some love. Hey, man, appreciate that, uh, Taylor Bell. Appreciate your support and your encouraging words, man. Appreciate it all. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Reggie, th those are my thoughts. And what I did like from Chris was in the later rounds when he started to move around a little bit, I liked his athletic movement. His, his movement around the ring, because some guys can move around and they don't have grace to their movement. Colbert has grace to his movement. Reminded me a lot of Pernell Whitaker when he was moving in his younger years, earlier in his career. He had a lot of that movement, dancing around and things like that, shoot his combinations and darting in and out and things like that. So he has that, but he needs to work, like I said, on the technical aspect of bringing his hands back home because someone who has the foot speed and athleticism to go along with foot speed and, and hand speed, they could take advantage of the openings that are there. Now, Young Bayar was not able to do that, but he was able to catch him clean early in the fight. And that should tell you that even early in the fight, that Colbert needs to work work more on being alert, keeping his hands home, because you getting hit early, it depends on who hitting you, 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 you may go. And you have to give him credit. He spoke of Nayambayar's strength at the end of the fight. He spoke about that and he said something about it several times it wasn't like he just said it once he said it several times so he felt something in there tonight reggie your your thoughts <clears throat> oh there we go yeah um that's what i was saying him him speaking about feeling the power from nine bar who's coming up from a division and it was it wasn't like nine bar landed the best of shots he's going to have issues in this division because i think i think chris has moved up to this division as well wasn't he at 126 at one point yeah and i, I think he, there may I be a fact he was at 126 i was surprised to see yeah. him at that 130 he definitely better not try to fool with tank davis yeah he, he better pump his brakes on that and i think it's just a lot of his self-confidence and sometimes self-confidence can lead a fool down the wrong road uh, he, he may need to slow on that and he may need to consider that he might be at the wrong division if Nambayar is able to crack him like that 
he's going to feel much more much more powerful from a fighter than that. And if Nambiar is able to catch him with a shot like that and buzz him, he's going to run into people who can probably do worse than buzz him and allow him to recover. Uh, he's just going to have to start either – he's going to either have to think about moving back down or he's going to have to get get more tough about – He's gonna to have to get more tough about the way that he's coming out here fighting. He needs to start the risk establishing his his output offensively and his aggression. He can't go in there doing that crap he was doing with that right hand. He 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 can't go in there and that, and to me mentally he he was thrown off in his fight because it was no way that that right hand should have been missing like that. That right hand should have been going behind the back of number R as much as it was. It should have been telegraphed because number R is able to block a lot of it. He got to clean things up. The jab was excellent, and he needs to be able to, to have a great jab. That jab ought to be there to set other things up, but it was like doing too much telegraphing. A guy named with number R who has slower reflexes, able to time and know when you're throwing it. Somebody with greater greater speed and time and a reflex is going to catch you with something. Uh, but th- that's my thoughts with that one. Uh, he may be in the wrong division. And he has some things to really tune up on. That self confidence will have him stagnant, believing that he is the guy, without doing additional stuff, going into elevated fights, and he'll 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 set himself up uh, in a bad way. And he needs to just start 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 humbling himself. He definitely has to humble himself. But that's my thoughts on that. And a couple of other points that you made, Reggie, about him going down. Uh, you know, we got Gary Russell Jr. down there at uh, 126, who is basically the man at that weight. And, he, you know, as soon as he is able to get in there with someone, he can prove that again. But uh, Nyambaya fought Gary Russell Jr. and actually acquitted himself pretty well. I mean, he didn't beat him. I'm not even trying to suggest that. But that gave him a tremendous shot in the arm to face a guy that's a talent like Colbert. And uh, Colbert is like a, you, you know, a, a 130 pounder, but Nyambayar moved up to face him there. And he spoke of Nyambayar's strength, right? So imagine had the fight taken place at 126. Does those, Big right hands that Nyambiar was able to land early. Do they put Chris on the floor? You know what I'm saying? Because Nyambiar fought at a higher weight tonight. So it's not like he was taking him on at his best weight. And if Colbert is in the wrong weight class, uh, salute to SB Stay Sharp. I see you out there, bro. If he's in the wrong weight class, what does that say if he goes down there? Are people going to put him on his behind? There's a huge possibility in that. You know, I mean, what 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 do you think about that, Reggie? Uh, it's just what I've been saying. He's going to have to reconsider some things. He he got a lot to reconsider. Um, and, and 126, him and Gary be a good fight. So he may consider it. But I think 130 may be the wrong division for him right now. I think it's the wrong division. Cause if he if he's getting if he's stating that about Nambiar and that's and and that makes more sense of why he started to get kind of on that on that uh bicycle there. That he felt some power from Nambiar and it caused him to start going into to his um his tool of boxing. And yeah, he, he he's probably in the wrong spot because any Eddie's other Shakur and all them guys are going to tear him up. Yeah, uh, it's just it's amazing that between one twenty six and one thirty five, man, you've got some damn good fighters down there, and these men need to start fighting each other, Reggie. This is what I'm talking about all the time when we give historical accounts of boxing as it was in a different era and then as you see it today we don't know who is the best because these men are not even fighting one another they're fighting opponents and seeking out opponents who on paper they're better than 
But the moment that they begin to fight one another, you're going to have a separation in talent, skill, and ability. And when you produce that, you produce who's really the goods. And sometimes, just sometimes, who you think is the goods isn't. And who you may not have considered is. So I want to see more of these competitive matches they're hiding behind networks and promoters that they don't have to go in there and do what they need to do which is to compete at the highest level you know he was saying in the post fight when they asked him what his next move was and everything he's like well i'll hey man and you know everybody gotta figure out and i'll follow their lead and he said well i'm still the wba champ man i don't that belt he has i don't care about that belt i consider him in the top 10 of his peers but is he the best i don't know i would like to find out but you got to fight other guys nayam bayar is a is a good tough competitor and he's a guy that's going to give you rounds. He's a guy that's going to give you a tough fight. He could even possibly knock a certain guy on his can on any given night that he's in there as long as he's in condition and ready to go 12 rounds. This night, I don't think he was in top condition simply because his punch output wasn't what it could have been. And he took this fight, and we can't overlook that, Reggie. He took this fight on a two-week notice. So, he for a two-week notice, world championship fight, televised on national television, he did great. He did great. But could he have done even better had he had a full camp to train for this guy? There you have your answer. It may have been something a little more interesting than it was. But these guys have got to start fighting each other. I cannot just give them the salute of, yeah, you the man or whatever, when there's so many other men out there that they can compete against. And once they start doing that against each other, even if you're under the same promotional group, you got to fight each other, man. Remember all the talk about Terrence Crawford being with top rank and then, you know, come on over to the PBC. I was saying the entire time, there are guys in the PBC that are still not fighting each other. There are some who have. But at the end of the day, just making the move to PBC doesn't guarantee that somebody's going to fight you. Huh? It's like you, you're seeing that right now. Being on the zone. If, you, if your best competition is over there on the zone, that's not guaranteed that another guy on the zone going to fight you. Demetrius Andre is over there, right? And you got Canelo Alvarez and Triple G, and neither one of them are fighting him. I mean, they're right there. The deal can be made, right? They're not fighting each other. So what the devil? It, it don't matter where you are. It's about who wants to prove something. And if you could get a guy that feels like you do about wanting to prove the fight can be made. But if guys are content, they love the fact that they got some jewelry around their shoulder or waist, which is one of those trinkets, and they can make a certain amount of money and just be good and comfortable where they only have to fight once a year or maybe every 18 months or so, that's what you're going to see out of guys. You know, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I just cannot give them what they feel they are when they're not doing what they need to be doing out there in the ring. Those, those are my thoughts on that. Yeah, that's that's all I had as well, OG. Yeah, so, you know, but uh, good fight card this evening. Uh, I think that ticket sales weren't what they would have liked them to be. Uh, there's a lot to be said about how things came about because Colbert was in, uh, in the news earlier this week for some of the remarks that he made about some of the other champs, 
Uh, they got fights coming up. We got uh, uh, Deontay Wilder coming up with his uh, rubber match with Tyson Fury at the end of this month, uh, the 24th. And then we got Earl Spence Jr. taking on Manny Pacquiao. And he had said some unsavory things about both champions, man. And these guys are popular champions. And it didn't do him any good that he opened his mouth like that. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself, but it's like, my goodness, timing is everything, right? And if he had just elected to talk about his own fight and everything, maybe ticket sales could have been better for him because he, he does say things that catches people ear. I just think he chose the wrong two guys to say uh, unflattering remarks about at a time where people are trying to get on track with what's about to go down. With In the case of Earl, people are looking toward him having this opportunity to fight the legend in Manny Pacquiao and people are looking at Wilder and hoping to see that he can prove his wares and come back and compete with Tyson Fury if not win his title back from Tyson Fury and things of that nature and all these comments that he made made for more news than the fight that he had for this evening and it showed in the stadium when it did you notice Reggie I know that the sun went down because they were outdoors and everything but I don't know if they could do it on TV with special effects or something. They seem to make it look even darker. <laughs> it made the crowd look like it was bigger. <laughs> or they told everybody that was sitting far out his friend, hey y'all, come back, come down here and just fill in this area right here behind the TV cameras. <laughs> Cause it hey, when the main event started, didn't it look like that? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know what you think, man. <laughs> that, that mug was empty. I don't know what. There was no way to fill it in. <laughs> yeah, that that was, I just found that to be funny, you know, because uh, it reminded me of uh, some of those uh, top rank and, and the zone broadcasts when they didn't have a lot of people, you know, sitting in. So they dim the lights and and tilt the camera angle and zoom in on the action a little bit more to make it look like it's more full, you know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> ain't nobody else came in there when Tyson Fury fought out of Wilding and everything and wasn't nobody hardly in there. That's what they did, man. It reminded me of that scene in Boomerang. Remember the Eddie Murphy movie, Boomerang? When he had Eartha Kitt in the, in the room and he said, uh, can we turn the lights out? And she did the clap on, clap off thing with the lights. And 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 the lights went out and the room was dark. It was very dark. You couldn't even see Eddie Murphy and Eartha Kid in there. And you heard his voice say, can we get it a little darker? <laughs> that just cracked me up in that movie, man. But, uh, no, man, it, hey, it is what it is, you know. And maybe he learned from this because he did uh, go back and ask uh, Reggie that they take that interview down and everything, even though everybody was jumping in on Wilder again, talking about, man, Wilder made Ness take the interview down. I knew even before the actual news came out, man, Wilder ain't got time for all that stuff. That brother is somewhere training. You know what I mean? He is in as Marvin Hagler say, he's in jail. You know, he went to jail to go train for this big match he got coming up. He don't even care. He ain't listening to any of this foolishness. But it's amazing how people keep putting his name and stuff and saying he's doing this and he's that and he's depressed. And this. they keep on creating these false narratives. And the world is going on is like they, they got to reach and say something about that man. That man is concentrating on what he's doing. But it was nice that Chris came out and said, hey, man, it was me, you know. So and he's trying to mend fences by by doing so. Did you have any comments on any of that? No, about the, the video takedown and the blame you're talking about. Yeah, and the, and the fact that, you know, he stirred up all that commotion this week instead of just, you know, trying to promote his fight, he, you know. But he was baited. Let's just honestly admit that, too. 
Ness baited him with that interview and said stuff because people know that Colbert is the type of guy, if you ask him something, you're going to get a raw response and it may not be popular. So he, he was baited into that, I think. And uh, he just gave the guy, uh, what do they call it? A uh, 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 tabloid response. You know what I'm saying? But that, yeah, that's what I was asking you. Yeah, I can't blame that on on Ness because I think Ness was trying to steer him away from being negative towards those fighters, and I think it was more him. And even Danny Garcia trying to bail Colbert out. It's just Colbert trying to be above everything. Colbert Colbert wants to sit in that spotlight, and I think it's about time he, he realized he has to humble himself. You have to respect those who have worked their way to be in those positions, but it's common amongst young cats who are competitive who come who, and, and, and you get that from New York cats a lot of New York cats is like that cocky they brash and all that crap and so you're gonna get that from a competitive dude who thinks he's the the premier guy that is out there he's gonna throw out this this level of hate and shame um, at guys and maybe it's the way he feels it also could be the way he feels he likes Tyson Fury and those are the statements he made, but as a fighter who has to be able to have, have to be able to get out here and sell fights, and he hasn't fully made it there, and you're speaking about fighters who have very strong fan bases, you don't have the backing to kind of make those stand those uh, statements, and you know not be able to stand up to the repercussion of what the fans because boxing fans are brutal as far as what they stand up for with their with their uh, favorite fighters, and him coming into a fight like that. With, with that stance being that he was fighting in a market that wasn't a market that would have been friendly to him, even if he didn't state these, make these comments. I think the fact that uh, before the video taken out, there's fall fallout from that. So it probably stopped a lot of fan, fight fans who would have wanted, wanted to go out there and see the fight to turn away from it. Then you had Earl Spence speaking about him being, being a born fighter that could have turned fans away from it. And then with the, Hearing of him being the person that's responsible for the video takedown and turn people away from it. Um, so he just has to learn from what he states. He can stay whatever he wants, but he has to he has to live with with the uh, the drawbacks to it, the fallout from it. But um, that's that's my thoughts on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we got uh, Bernard Burton out there in that super chat. Salute to Bernard Burton, man. We appreciate you and your donations to the channel and the show. He says, salute Stormy and Reggie and chat. Salute to you, brother. And thanks again for your donation. We appreciate that. We really do. So, uh, but yeah, Reggie, that's uh, pretty much it. It was, a, it was a short night because we had the tank fight replay that went ahead at a two card uh fight so um you know that that's pretty much what we have for this evening would you like to uh give everybody some some final thoughts and everything and if you got anything on the horizon some kind of stream or video you're going to have doing you can go ahead and feel free to to speak on that or tell everybody where they can find you <clears throat> Yeah, no, nah, no special screen, no uh, strings. I just stuff just fly in my head at the last second, and then I'm like, I'm gonna do a stream on that one. So, no, nah, I don't have anything set up as of yet. Um, just the constant videos rolling out. Um, and you can catch me over on Boxing Conversations with Reggie Owens, and also on the backup channel with the same name, just the number two. And wait, what we got? Oh, we got Charlo Unification next week, so we'll be seeing y'all next week. What unification about? And that should be some fire right there. But uh, that's all I got. Another great night of boxing. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, hey, man, it's it's been a quick evening on this one because we, again, like I said before, we didn't have uh, any uh, extra or additional uh, cards because it, it, it was uh, you know the Tank Davis replay. So. Another decent night of boxing. Uh, we had a chance to <clears throat> see our uh, 
our guys, you know, come out and do their thing. And when I say our guys, I'm talking about our, our fighters. We, we support the sport, man. We love to uh, talk this boxing. That's why we do these post-fight shows and do the fight calls and everything like that. Reggie had another great call this evening. And uh, it, it's what's happening. You know what I'm saying? So really appreciate everybody that came out to uh, listen to us this evening. And... We're looking forward to next week where we get the uh, the Charlo and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, forgive me. I can't think of the fighter's name that he's fighting. Oh, um, Brian Castano. Castano. Brian Castano. Yeah. Forgive me on that. Uh, well, we get to see their, their uh, unification. And it's for Undisputed, man. How can you not be excited by that? Because... Castano is gonna he's gonna come and try to fight and uh Jamel is gonna come and try to knock his head off. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> we know what that's gonna be all about. It's just a matter of if the man's gonna be able to take it as well as dish it. He's gonna have to be able to do both. He can't do just one or the other because it's not gonna work out for him. But uh I'll be excited to check that one out. Looking forward to it, and uh, I'm sure Reggie is, as well as you all in the chat. But yeah, that's going to be the post-fight show for us for this evening. Appreciate everybody that came in and checked us out. Don't forget to hit that like button if you didn't while you were listening. I know some of y'all come in and, you know, you be too busy with them Budweiser's and everything. You can't hit the like button, but just hit the like button for us, you got you guys, because we, we out here doing this for you, so... But uh, until next weekend, we'll catch you guys on the next one. This is Stormy B-Man signing off with my man Boxing Conversations with Reggie Owens. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace to everybody. Enjoy your 4th of July weekend. Be safe. Don't be doing stupid stuff with firecrackers and everything. And leave them pistols alone. And just put some ribs on the grill or something. Or smoke some fish or whatever. But... Just stay safe and take care of yourself and your families. Peace.